Hi friends, it's Miss Andrea from the Hickory Corner branch of the Mercer County Library System. And today I wanna to share with you something really special I found in my backyard. Do you know what that is? That's right, it's a feather. It's a very large feather. It's actually about nine inches from here to here, down here. And when we found it, my daughter was like, mommy, I think it's from a tiger bird. Now that's not a real thing, but she thought so because of the beautiful stripes on the feather. And I didn't actually know what kind of bird this came from. So I got in touch with my friend, Miss Jackie, who works at the Lawrenceville branch. And she reached out to Julie Zikafus. So here's Julie's website. She is a biologist, she is a nature artist, and she's an author. We actually have four of Julie's books on Hoopla, which is in our virtual library, our virtual database. Okay, Julie has four books here all about birds. And Miss Jackie even did a review of Julie's Bluebird Effect book on YouTube. And so she reached out to Jackie and she very nicely got back to us and she saw the pictures of it. And she said that this feather is from a great horned owl. Isn't that exciting? Now, federal laws say that we should not own these feathers, so I'm not gonna be keeping this, but I just wanted to show you in this video because I just thought it was so beautiful, and it really sparked my curiosity. Does that ever happen with you? Do you ever find something and just wanna learn more about it? Well, I found this book about great horned owls, and I would like to share some facts with you today about them, and you can also find that same exact book again on Hoopla in our virtual library. We have it as an ebook and an audio book, so you can read it online or you can listen to it. But I'm going to show you as well. Okay, so this is from the Blast Off Readers Collection, and the author is Christina Leaf. And we are going to learn some facts about great horned owls. What are great horned owls? Great horned owls are mighty raptors. These birds are common throughout all of North America, except for the northernmost parts of Canada and Alaska. Okay, so do you see that map? The orange is where we find them. So we don't find them up where it starts to get really cold up here in the white, but down here in the orange, okay? And then we got New Jersey over here on the East Coast, so we definitely fall in there. Owls usually live in forests. However, they can adapt to live in deserts, swamps, or even cities. And in my case, the suburbs of New Jersey. Okay, look at the size of a great horned owl. Okay, that's a person about five or six feet tall. And then here's the size of the owl, so it's a, it's a pretty big bird. The great horned owls are among the largest birds in North America. Their bodies are about two feet long. Their wings can measure almost five feet. So I wanna show you something. I am about five feet tall. Yes, I'm not that tall. I'm about five foot two inches long. So if I spread my arms all the way out and I lean back a little so you can see my fingertips, from fingertip to fingertip, that is about five feet. So my arms are just about the wingspan of a great horned owl. Wow, can you imagine? that flying around in my backyard. Great horned owls, great horned owls have ear tufts on their head. Okay, so these little things that stick up here. These feathers look like horns. Okay, so that's where they got their name. The owls move them to communicate with family members. The ear tufts also make the owls look threatening to enemies. Okay, other ways you can identify a great horned owl. Okay, so we have their ear tufts, those big yellow eyes, and then this hooked beak, which will help them with hunting. We'll learn a little bit more about that later. Ear tufts help great horned owls blend in with trees while they sleep. Brown, gray, and cream spotted bodies also hide the owl against the tree bark. Okay, so do you see how it looks like he's blending in? Do you remember what that's called? Camouflage, good job. Great horned owls usually search for food in the late evening and at night. Do you remember what it's called when an animal sleeps during the day and comes out at night? Nocturnal, good job. Large yellow eyes help these carnivores spot their prey. Look at those big eyes. They need those big eyes to help see in the dark. And they're carnivores, which means they eat meat, good. 
Excellent ears let the owls hear the smallest sounds. Okay, that helps them with hunting and finding prey too. Great horned owls hunt from a perch. They turn their heads to look all around. So that's something really unique that they can do. They can turn their heads around. Then the birds dive down to catch dinner. Soft wing feathers make them silent flyers. They attack by surprise. Okay, so if they're very quiet, their prey can't hear them coming. Okay, so look at the menu of things that they eat. Mice, rabbits, squirrels, even skunks. That's a stinky dinner. And crows and meadow voles. The owl's sharp talons, okay, right there at the bottom. Their claws right there. Their talons grab prey. Favorite catches are small mammals. However, their strong grip can hold much heavier prey. The owls tear apart larger prey with hooked beaks and they swallow smaller prey whole. My goodness, they eat up a mouse in one gulp. We're going to get back to that in a little bit, so just remember that. Okay, this is all about nesting. Female great horned owls lay eggs in winter, and they use empty nests built by other big birds. That's convenient. They just use an empty nest that they find. They don't have to build their own, and males bring food to the nests. Females stay with the eggs to keep them warm. Okay, so here's some facts about owl babies. Owl babies are called owlets, and mommies lay about one to four eggs, and the babies stay in there for 30 to 37 days, and then they spend about six to seven months with their mommies and daddies after they hatch. Owlets stay with their parents after they hatch. Mom and dad protect the babies from danger. They will attack any predator that comes too close. Okay, so now you guys know more about the great horned owl, and it all started from finding this feather. Okay, so this book was a nonfiction book. It was all about facts. If you want to hear a great story about owls, a fiction book, this book is called Wow, Said the Owl, and Miss Connie read this in another video on our Storytime playlist, so you can look that up. I love this book. And so, remember we were talking about the way that owls eat their food whole, including all the bones and everything? Well, I want to show you this book. It's called Bird Guide of North America, and there's a page. It's from National Geographic Kids. There is a page about great horned owls. Okay, and I'm going to show you up close that picture at the bottom. You see that? Looks a little bit gross. That's called an owl pellet. And that's what owls cough up or regurgitate when they don't want to eat it. They don't, they don't want the bones in their bellies and things like that. So they regurgitate it up in something called an owl pellet. And Miss Chrissy, she's so brave. She's going to dissect an owl pellet and show you what's inside. So I'm going to turn it over to her right now. Thank you, Miss Andrea, and thank you for sharing that feather with us. I always love when learning is prompted by something that's happening around us, something we find or something we're excited about learning more about. So let me show you an owl pellet. Now the owl pellets, if you order them online, a lot of times they'll come like wrapped like this, like little baby baked potatoes in their foil there. Um, but outside of the foyer, I have a really big one right here. Um, it kind of looks like this. So it's basically just like this brown ball. It looks like um, just a bunch of dirt or mud. And actually there probably is dirt there. Um, if you look around, you might see little specks of things. There might be some pine needles, some grass, stuff like that. Because as the owl is eating, um, some of that might also get in its mouth as well as whatever's on the fur of the animal it's eating. And you can definitely see pieces of fur. So the fur is a big thing um, that's part of the pellet here. So we wanna examine the outside first and see all of that neat stuff. Um, Cause even that can be used to determine where the owl um, lives. And again, a big part of what this is gonna determine is its diet. So let's start by opening it up. Now, if your owl pellet was kind of hard, you could soak it in warm water to soften it up a bit. But then basically we're just going to use some tools and a lot of times if you order owl pellets online you will get some tools with them. But this is just kind of like a little toothpick there that I'm just going to use to dig in here. And I want to be gentle because I don't want to break any of the little bones. So again, if it's hard, 
then try softening it first. Oh, I already right off the bat have a bone here. So we have this little bone there, teeny tiny, because the animals are pretty teeny tiny. Lots and lots and lots of fur. That's what this stuff is. Kind of looks like lint from your dryer, but it's fur. Oh, here's another, another little bone here. Right there's a tiny bone. Let's see what else we can get. Lots of bone in here. Oh, I see lots of pieces in here now. Oh, here's a bigger bone there. So now why is all of this in here? And what exactly is a pellet? Well, Miss Andrea explained that it's the parts of the animal that the owl can't eat. And so what the owl does is as it swallows everything down, it goes down into its gizzard. All birds have a gizzard. Gizzard is an area where it's got really strong muscles and it also a lot of times has gravel, grit, little stones um, that it uses to actually digest its food because it doesn't chew, it doesn't have teeth. So since it can't chew the food, that's gonna help break up the food. And then from there, from the gizzard, we have two different things. We have the meat and the stuff that can be digested by the owl, and we have the stuff that can't, like the fur and the bones. So that's what's in the pellet. So that gets pushed back up out of the gizzard. The owl actually has to, um, vomit this up, throw this up before it can eat again or else more food can't get down in the gizzard. So they do this after they eat. And we can match these up actually. A lot of times, again, if you get a kit or you can look online, there is pictures of some of the common um, animals that owls do eat. So you can try to find, um, match the bones up. So you can kind of try to figure out what animal it is. I know in this one over here I have, I saw something really neat. Let me start opening that up a little bit more so I can show you and hopefully I can get it still pretty whole. Oh, right there. So that's actually looking like the jaw of something, that little orange color there. Um, that's looking like the jaw um, of an animal. And that little color is probably, probably a vole or some animal like that that has little teeth like that that keep growing. They're long teeth and their teeth are really strong and they have, um, usually they have a little bit more um, iron in them so they have this orange color to them as well. So sometimes you can find actually, oh, oh here we go, here's the perfect jaw. We can actually see the other little teeth in here. So I don't know if you can see that little row of teeth in there. It's really neat to see, especially my friends who come to my dental health lessons or see my skulls um, know that about those little orange teeth and then the other teeth we can see because they have different types of teeth depending on what, anim what they eat, what those animals eat. So anyway, so an owl pellet is really cool to just go through and find, and sometimes you can find a whole skull in here, but we wanna make sure, oh, I've got one right here. Really neat here. This one would have to be cleaned up some because it's got some fur, but this is a skull. Oh, I even have a little bit of the bottom jaw still right there. So that's a little skull. I can see its front teeth there. And on this side, I still have part of the jaw. The other jaw is broken off, but that's from a small animal. Probably, um, again, this looks like it was probably like a little vole or something. I believe these pellets are from a barn owl and 80% of their diet is voles. Um, but the other 20% is what kind of shows us what kind of um, owl it is or where it's from based on what other things that they eat. So anyway, so owl pellets are really cool. And when I'm done here, I'm going to go wash my hands. I'm going to keep my bones for my collections. And I can also go online to kidwings.com and I can learn more about owls and owl pellets and actually do a virtual owl pellet dissection. So check that out.